the year 2000 was really the beginning of the opiate crisis in this country. It started in really 1999, and through at least through 2016, where we have information on this, the CDC says we've had 350,000 people die of opiate overdose. And that's over 63,000 people in 2016 alone. When you talked about crack, you had a certain idea of what that person looked like or how that person lived or, or how they controlled their life. And the opiate crisis has changed that. Now when you think about opiate crisis, I don't think about someone on a street corner selling drugs. I think about a, a nurse. I think about a, a student. I think about someone who got in a bad car accident who works in construction who needs to figure out how to get through his day. We know that law enforcement isn't, isn't the answer uh, for everything. We need your help. We need your input. We need your insight. We need your partnership. We need you to come alongside us to help us with this problem because this is so far reaching. The key thing we need to do is to help doctors understand you are not helping your patients, you're hurting them. We have currently 30 of those people in that category, that dealer that we've identified, that we're working cases on. I can't even imagine how many others that have not been identified. So when we arrest them, we look at their phones and we do our investigative tools and techniques and we can get a ballpark range of how many clients they have. And it ranges from 20 to 50. Let's say on the lower end, 20 of them are coming in daily. That's 600 people. If we take the upper end of the spectrum, just the 30 that we're aware of, again, I believe it's much higher, and we take the higher range of 50 clients, 1,500 people a day, and I'll even say we can double, maybe triple that. As you know, the problem is there's not enough treatment facilities in this community or any community. Addiction is not a criminal justice issue. It's a health issue. And our money should be allocated accordingly. We should be funding treatment centers instead of locking these people up behind bars. Another person had a story about um, their child going to the emergency room, her 16-year-old daughter. And that's actually where we need to start changing the protocols, because that's where a lot of people get hooked. They go to the ER, they get the, the high-dose prescription opiate drugs, and they get hooked. And we've got to change it right there, because anti-inflammatories work at least as well, and you don't get hooked. It's great. And heroin or tax or any other, you know, painkiller. And suddenly life becomes dull. For me, what worked is getting chemical assistance treatment, like Suboxone, having someone there to help fund it, and giving me a break long enough to get back on my feet to learn how to live like a normal human being, and slowly eliminating the drugs from my life. And it took a long time, careful process that I could not do by myself without help. My name is Maria Bledsoe. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Central Florida Care's Health System. We fund substance abuse and mental health services. As it relates to opioid addiction, we have medication-assisted treatment programs. CentralFloridaCares.org for more information related to the resources in your community.